stepping back in here uh, with beautiful Alaska Native interviews, Tater Tot, episode mm-hmm. three, all for the family. And we left off uh, talking with your Anna about uh, some important lessons. And yep. where did we arrive at in that conversation? Well, um, the the question was about any life lessons or stories from, from my elders. And right as I was about to start talking about my grandmother and the domestic violence that she's gone through, she called. So it was perfect timing. And um, there were... There were, she's gone through so many domestic violence situations and, and there were, the, she told me that there were two men specifically and she was married to both of them, not at the same time, <laughs> um, she was married to the both of them and they, there was a lot of drinking and a lot of fighting involved. Um, and then there was. So it was, I guess the order it would be, would be drinking, beatings, and fighting. Because she admitted to me that there were a few times where she, she started a, a fight, fight, you know. Um, but uh, that, that happened less than just straight beatings from her husband of the time. And uh, that was... I grew up hearing those stories, and that was something that I really wish I had, uh, hey, not too loud. Can they even hear me? Can you hear them? <laughs> they can feel you. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I wish I had taken to heart a lot of those stories of domestic violence, because... I have, uh, I've been arrested twice for domestic violence, and I wish I had never even started. Um, but they are, that's what I was mentioning earlier that, you know, it's some of the life lessons didn't click until, you know, those moments. And I'm just like, oh man, I wish I had, I wish I had kept that in my mind this whole time. And... You know, I I do wish I had never once, even the first, according to my wife, the only time that I ever laid hands on her that she felt was actually justified was the very first time. And it was, uh, we were both very suicidal. Um, and that was before... That was before any of us got old enough to start drinking. But um we were at least legally. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh and and it was I slapped her once because I kept telling her no, don't do this, no, don't do this. And uh when I slapped her, I had said, no, I'm not going to let you kill yourself. And then she kissed me. Yeah, she kissed me right after that. And that, that bout ended, like, right there. Um, All other times that I've laid hands on my wife were, like I don't even I don't even like the fact that I did that. Um there have been a few times where she'll remember it and and bring it up and she has thanked me for that specific incident a couple of times, but you know, I still I still feel bad about having done it. And um you know, I, I was a violent kid, 
yeah, earlier I talked about, you know, I had a lot of fun. But I was a violent kid, especially with my uh, siblings and cousins. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I know my grandmother was constantly, constantly telling me about her domestic violence situations. And she was telling me for a reason. And I wish I had uh, taken it to heart even as young as 12, 13 when I really started to fight with my siblings. Speaking of ages, uh, we kind of touched on it a little bit outside. How old were you again when you had your first child? Oh, yeah, we were talking about that. So my wife and I have been together over 15 years. Our That's eldest child is 14. Uh, we met when we were both 15. I turned 16, not mm. even a month later. And we were both 16 when our oldest one was born. But uh, before we even got pregnant, we sat down and had a conversation about how we were going to raise this kid being from two different villages. I'm from Nome. She's from Fort Yukon. That's 600 miles apart. So we talked about having a kid and how to raise it before we got pregnant at 15, at 15 and 16 years old. I know that rarely happens even among grown-ups who are married. Um, and, you know, we were just a couple of teenagers who made a very grown-up decision. And he was our ring bearer at our wedding. He was three. <laughs> very um, nice, very nice. We got married almost a month after she turned 20 and like three months before I turned 21. Um And then we didn't even have our second son until he was born three weeks after our first anniversary. That's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And. Oh, man, I better stop thinking about that. (laughs) (laughs) But as most married men who would be watching this would know, it's hard to not think about it. (laughs) I think y'all know what I'm getting at. But, uh. So now we have four kids, and they range from 14 all the way down to five, with the other two being nine and seven. Any advice for other dads in your situation? Um, The world will tell you spend, don't worry about how much time you spend with your kids, worry about the quality of the time you spend with your kids but that's not how kids spell love Uh, kids spell love P-I-M-E yeah spend quality time with your kids but also spend as much time with them as you can because there will come a day when they won't want to spend time with you anymore no. <laughs> and that's, you know, as a 31 year old father of a teenager, that that makes it a little, little painful, you know. Um, with my oldest one, okay, with my three older ones, most of their lives, I was a workaholic. Um, It was pretty much only with the youngest one that there were times where I wasn't working. Um, There was, let's see, our youngest one was during his second birthday party. I was still looking for a job. And there was like four or five months there where I wasn't working. And then after I got fired from that job, which was my second arrest, Um, there was almost two months where I was not working. And then after I, and that's the last job I've had was that one after my arrest. I quit working a year and a half ago now. And my youngest one is five and a half. So a good chunk of his life, daddy was at home. 
with the older ones, they the oldest one is still I think still adjusting to me being a stay at home dad. Um, I know most of his life I was working mornings, so I got to spend the typical like a typical nine to five family, you know. I got to spend the dinner time and stuff with him. So he's used to that, but I think I think he's still kind of adjusting to me being a stay at home dad. Um and with like I said, most of his life me being a workaholic that's the consequences of that are difficult. Um, you know, with mommy being the one working now, he's still, I mean, of course she is his mother, but he's, there's still stuff that he, he won't tell me. Right. And that's a lot of that is because I didn't listen to the little things when he was little. I didn't spend enough time with him. And so now when I have the time, you know, he's a teenager now. He doesn't want to spend time with me. And I knew this day was coming. I've always known this day was coming. I just didn't do anything about it when I should have. So to all the, the fathers out there, you know, especially if your kids are still little, don't worry just about the quality of the time you spend with them. Worry about the time itself. And the amount of it. Because that's how they spell love. Even if even if you guys are just... Even if you're just in the same room with your kid while they're playing around. In their eyes, that's daddy spending time with me. And, you know, that means a lot to them. Uh, Beautiful. Yep, that's some good advice for all you dads out there. Spend time with your kids as much as you can. Quality time and just time in general. And then for you married men, don't neglect time with your wife as well. That's something I just started working on after our 10th anniversary. Yeah. No wife I, <laughs> I, I, I got to be honest. I was, was too worried about work and too worried about my kids after work and too worried about music or making music not so much the business part of it until really until this school year but like I've been learning and absorbing information but you know I wasn't I wasn't putting too much effort into time with my wife so you know make sure if you're married and you have kids yeah spend time with your kids yeah do things for your kids but if you're married, do things for your spouse too. You know, go on dates. Even if it's just, you know, leaving the kids with a sitter or with your parents if possible. Or in our case, we can leave them with our oldest one for a while. <laughs> and, you know, just go for a walk together. Hold hands, chat. Um, our last date was I cooked shrimp scampi here at home while my kids ate dinner at my mom's. And I interviewed my wife. To learn about my wife. You know. And it didn't cost anything. Because I didn't have to pay my mom. Right. <laughs> uh, well I guess it did cost. Like 20 bucks for the flowers. I did. I, I bought. And I cut myself. Oh I didn't cut myself. But I cut the flowers myself. That's what's up. Um, you know. And, and my wife and I had an amazing time. Speaking of food, what's your favorite native food? Favorite native food? Oh, dang. I guess I'd have to say smoked salmon. And okay. that's tough because I love haguruk or Eskimo ice cream. I love black meat. I love muktuk. I love Half dried, half baked salmon. I love trout. Oh man, moose! Like 
I have yet to cook moose meat myself. My wife has always cooked the moose meat. Even when the one time I used ground moose meat or moose burger to make spaghetti, my wife cooked the meat and then I made the sauce. That's what's up. I have yet to ever cook moose myself. I love how my wife cooks moose. <laughs> oh, man, I'm hungry now. Man, you're making me hungry. <laughs> How do you see yourself making a positive impact on the world coming from Alaska? Um, that's a hard question to answer because that path has already started. Um, there's a documentary titled We Breathe Again. And I was a part of that. I was one of the four main people interviewed in that film. Um, and the film is about intergenerational trauma, alcoholism, and suicide. And for me, that all came in one person. Um, my, I'm going dark here, okay? But it's for a good reason, all right? So my biological father committed suicide the day I turned seven. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Um, I was raised by my stepdad, the man that married my mom. That's my dad. He taught me how to ride a bike. He taught me how to fish. He's been there since I was like four or five years old. Like, I remember looking up to him and being scared because of how he looked. <laughs> but that's my dad. Uh, and the last time I saw my biological father alive, him and my dad were talking. I was in the backseat of the uh, little... I thought I was black until like two years ago. My mom was like, oh no, son, that car was green. <laughs> but I was in the backseat of a little green car. My brother was sitting next to me. Different father. My mom was a passenger and dad was talking with my father. And he had his two other kids. And he was a great father to them. Like, that warms... That has always warmed my heart. When I finally got the opportunity to ask, how was Bond for you? And they both were like, oh, he was, from what I remember, he was a great dad. And that was in the midst of hearing all of the bad stuff that our father was doing in his life. And that made it easier for me to handle all the bad stuff. That, you know, that made me feel good. Knowing at least he was a great father to his other two kids. And he was going to marry their mom until he killed himself. But that's how I ended up in We Breathe Again. Was... Um, one of the ladies that works at the high school in Nome, where I'm from, she knew she knew that about me, and she her nephew was working on this film, and so uh, the movie is, or the film is also about getting through it and hope for life afterwards. Where can we check that out at? Uh, you can find We Breathe Again on Amazon. Uh, you can also find it on YouTube. The whole thing is on YouTube. On That's what's up. I'll be watching you tonight. Um, but, uh, so, trying to make a positive impact. Part of it would be telling my story. I know that. Because I know there are other people who have gone through, you know, losing a parent. Especially the suicide in the state. And, you know, the... We Breathe Again made waves in Greenland because they also have a high suicide rate. Um, and, you know, being in the documentary since, pretty much since he started filming, that, I'll be honest, that kind of shaped where I went with my music also. Um, I, I truly hope that in the future, when I've got more music out, that someone could be going through a rough time, because I know everybody does, and maybe they might be thinking of killing themselves, and then one of my songs comes on, and it helps. It helps them not do it. That's what's up. Um... Because, you know, I've been through suicidal bouts myself, as I said earlier. But, uh, 
uh, somebody who doesn't rap, as far as I know, but he's a, a dancer. His name is uh, Lil C. Uh, he's in Rise with a Z, and he's also in You Got Served Beat the World. Uh, his the the way he feels about or felt about himself after his father's suicide, I can relate to a lot. So, you know, that's, he's making a positive impact and he's somebody I look up to. Um, Cause you know, for one, he's been in the spotlight longer. For two, he is older than me. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the way he, the way he talks about how he took that negative and managed to turn it into something positive that's that's what I look up to. Very nice. What does Alaska need to work on itself in order to push forward? And that's not limited to music. Mindset. I guess would be the, the most umbrella answer because and I have a rap verse about this actually there's are a, a lot of a lot of Alaskans that I know that are very closed minded they they don't like accepting outside information outside knowledge um, regardless of how positive it is um and I know a lot, and it's not just among natives, I know a lot of people in Alaska, you know, I drink sometimes, I rarely get drunk, because my father was drunk when he killed himself, um, that's my reasoning for rarely getting drunk, and yeah, I drink sometimes, but, ooh, excuse me, I know a lot of people in this state love to drink, and I remember when where I'm from, Nome, raised their alcohol taxes. And people started drinking more. Um, and I know they don't, a lot of people up here don't like hearing anything that convicts them for what, they're, what they've done, what they're doing. So mindset is something that would really help Alaska push forward. I like that one. Favorite place you've been in Alaska? Oh man. I'd have to say Sitka. Sitka is nice. I went to Edgecombe. It's where I met my wife very beautiful we were on hikes like three times a week <laughs> um, and it was you know to a lot of the same places you know Beaver Lake um, or what else was there oh man it's been so long <laughs> but you know 15 years this is like half my life ago <laughs> but you know there was Beaver Lake and Mosquito Cove were the ones we went on the most, and we enjoyed it every time. We never got bored of them hikes. We met on the Indian River hike. Very beautiful. She still says I saved her life on that hike. All I did was keep her from going in the water. <laughs> That's how I see it. But she's like, oh, no, that water was running fast. I'm like, really? Uh, okay. Whatever you say, babe. <laughs> it's a good thing you saved her. Oh, and then there was uh, Mount Prestovia. I really enjoyed I went on that one twice. The two times that we went on that hike, I was on both. <laughs> um, we went on the most of the Mount Edgecombe hike. And I want to finish that hike someday. Um, I want to go with our kids, though, and not with the Edgecombe instructors, because then we're super limited on time with the Edgecombe instructors. And, 
if we go with our kids, you know, we can leave like way early in the morning, take a bunch of grapes and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Soak it up. And then, uh, but yeah, I'd have to say Sitka for, you know, it's very homey feeling there also. Um, my favorite place I've lived is Palmer and I live in Anchorage. My favorite place I've lived in is Palmer, but Sitka would be an amazing place to go back to. Place in Alaska you'd like to go that you haven't? Some people might call me crazy for this. Even probably mostly the people that live there. I don't know. But Utkaigvik, formerly known as Barrow. Top, top. Yep. I, uh, like, I want to go there in the winter and then again in the summer. Well, we were just talking on the last episode. Half smoked wanted to go to Barrow. Should we all just take a trip to Barrow? <laughs> Someday, yeah. Like, like making a whole music event, you know? I mean, Red went up there for his music. Maybe he might be willing to go back. Yo. Red, if you're watching this, hit me up about a trip to Ukaivik, man. Also hit up Truly and Half Smoked. We'll set it off. Yeah. I'm pretty sure our wives would be like, yeah, go ahead. Get out of here. <laughs> well... Where can we expect to see you in the future spreading your work of Alaska? Any place on the map in particular? Uh, well, it is my plan, and it is a hope of mine to go back to Nome every time I finish a CD and drop it. Because that's where I'm from. That's what's up. Uh, you know, and, and I I don't plan on selling CDs there. You know, this that's a town that, that I got to play out a lot in. Town that also drove me a little crazy. A little sour sweet. Yep. And you know, I wanna like every time I go up to Nome. I want to have a CD, a new CD with me and do it in Nome first before officially dropping it anywhere else. Um, and not sell a single CD there. Just pass them out, man. That's that's my homies. That's my nomies. You know? <laughs> Lupe is very much the same way. One of the guys I look up to, he, the people he grew up with, the people from his block, he don't sell them CDs. He's like, no, just take it. That's what's up. And you know that's that's how I am with with people from Nome. Here, just take it. Spread the love. But also, you know, here in Anchorage and out in Palmer are probably going to be the two mo main places that I'll be selling CDs, trading CDs for email addresses. You know, all that good stuff. Okay, favorite color? Green. Hey, can't argue with Wait. that one. My grandma made this uh, cuss book specifically for me. Green. I got my name on my hat in green. I, I don't go a day without wearing something green. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Got the dragon chain. Oh, Wife, so wifey cool. gave you that? Yep. My wife got me this for Halloween time. And, uh, you know, the little half marble thing. I'll rub that when I'm... When I'm, it helps me with anxiety, helps keep me grounded, but I also rub it when I'm, you know, having a good time so that it's not all, you know, just anxiety in this little thing here. But, um, you know, never been much of a weed smoker until recently, till I discovered, or till my wife finally told me, she thought I knew that I have anxiety. I just, I don't get stoned. It's just enough to calm my nerves, you know? And it's not even, it's not even every day. 
it, shoot, I'd venture to say it's not even every other day. You know, it's not very often. But green's been my favorite color since, like, birth. Should have been born with green blankets, you know. <laughs> Hobbies? Hobbies? Dancing? That's what's up. Rapping? Um, cooking? Used to get paid for cooking. Uh, I was a kitchen worker for most of my working life. Um, I like kind of watching series, you know. Um, Dragon Ball Z, Avatar, and Korra are probably my favorite series. Um, Xena, we're going through that. Um, someday I want to get all of Big Bang Theory. And, and then there's the Fast, Fast and Furious series. We have most of that. Or our oldest one. Correction, not we. Our oldest one. He owns them. Uh, everyone that's out so far on Blu-ray, he has. That's um, what's up. And then, like, we've seen every Avengers series movie in theater you know and then I just recently became a fan of Harry Potter even though I saw every single one in theater I was not a fan until this school year um but yeah dancing rapping cooking watching series and listening to dope lyrics regardless of the genre that's what's up Shout outs. Shout outs. First and foremost, Yahweh. But as far as physical world is concerned, I guess, first and foremost, my wife. If you think I'm pretty, wait till you see my wife. She's like, <laughs> she yet. I wish she would have been here for it. <laughs> yeah. She, like in Palmer, she never got pulled over. For doing the same things I got pulled over doing. It's a pretty smile. Yeah. <laughs> you both got it. <laughs> but, uh, like, I don't care what anybody says. I am married to the most beautiful woman in the world. And I believe every husband should feel that way. Um, and then my kids, even though they're all right out there, <laughs> um, and then my parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles. Um, there are so many of them that are on Facebook. <laughs> but I guess, like, name-wise, I could easily say, you know, Janana Gilder. Um, my dad is not on Facebook or any social media, for that matter. He's like, no, nah, I'm too old for that. Okay. You know what I mean? It keeps it less stress on him. Yes, sir. Um, there's Rosalind Atateev, my grandmother. Um, Donna Thurber, who is married to my biological grandfather. Because um, he's not on Facebook either. Neither is Papa, the one that my grandma's with. And she was married to him for most of Like, I didn't even know they were divorced for like the first three years. But, uh, I mean, they're living together again now. But, um, there's also, uh, I don't know if my Auntie Marcy's on Facebook still. But I have a ton of aunts and uncles on Facebook. Um, and then musical shout outs would be yourself. Thank you. Um, D the Lyricist. Alaska Red, Tony Taylor, Stevie the Blessed, um, AK Rebel, Exile, uh, Charles Dufresne, Sule Spain, Kevin DeBrain, or Kevin Cortex, Live from the North, um, JB Loud, or Justin Bright, um, 
Did I say Tony Taylor? Mm -hmm. If not Tony Taylor, um, DJ Allegiance, Matt Angler, Hack, Hack Havoc, uh, Tubby, up in Fairbanks. Yo, Tubby, if you watch this, my wife is one of your fans, man. Like, she got me into your music. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, one more time, tell the people where to find you and how to get in touch. You can find me at, let's see, on Facebook, SoundCloud, and YouTube, Tater Top Music. Two T's at the end of Tater Top, and then... Um, music is a separate word. Um, on Instagram at tatertot.music, on Twitter at tatertotmusic, everywhere, all other digital platforms for music, tatertot. Uh, on Facebook, my personal profile and LinkedIn is Edward Tate. Excuse me. And if you're on Reverb Nation, I totally forgot about that earlier, tatertot music also. And then I think that's it as far as how to find me. The only one I have two separate profiles on would be Facebook. Okay, okay. Uh, any special announcements, gifts, or offerings for the people tuning in? Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, without you guys, without any of the fans of anything, none of the entertainment business would be able to exist um, the let's see I don't know the special announcements I'm waiting on word from the beat maker for that love song um, but you know he's got million followers I think on YouTube maybe one and a half something like that so I, I know he's busy um, it's a little too close to Valentine's Day to be able to drop the song on Valentine's Day but you know I'm hoping to be able to release that love song this year because well my wife really likes the song she can't wait for it to be mixed maybe on your anniversary oh yeah that's a good I had that as my good second thought and then forgot because I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, that about wraps it up with Mr. Tot. I'll be in touch in a year or so for a follow-up. Uh, right now, we're going to give the group a uh, chance to chime in and ask anything. And uh, y'all stay safe out there and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, sir. Mr. Tater Top, before we go, one last thing. What's the medallion right there next to you? Oh, yes. So, when I graduated high school, my mother bought me this 08 dog tag chain. And uh, I used to wear it all the time. Like, all the time. You know? And a lot of the jewels that were in it have since came out because I used to I used to crump in this so and then you know there was some break dancing back in the days until I messed up my wrist there was you know a lot of doing the robot and the quake and so a lot of dancing happened with this chain on so it's got a lot of jewels missing but it it really means a lot for me um, my wife wears it now more than I do because um, I wear this a lot now the dragon. Yep. And nope. that's that's kind of why we picked this spot in our room, is because of the 08 chain, and the Alaska red shirt. And uh, you know that was his on the, on my Grizzly tour back in 2012, right? Or was it 13? Yeah. One, one of those two years. Yeah. We met him at the train depot. He got to meet three of my kids at the time. Are no, no, I think it was thirteen because we had our third son by then, and he was born in December of twelve. So 
But, uh, and, and so Red, if you guys don't know who Red is, here's something about him. He remembers, like, everybody. Like, we hadn't seen him, like, we met him at this show in Palmer at the train depot with our three kids. Next time we saw him was 2017. I had dreads back then during this time. First thing he says when I when I walked up to him, he's like, yo, what'd you do to your hair? Why is it gone? My mother. She cut him off. How are all four of your boys doing? And he 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 asked that as a general question. And then he asked them by name how they were doing individually. Very sharp. And I was like, so and then that was how that conversation went because he was at a, he was doing a show, and so you know I gave him little like once or two sentence for each kid you know and so I walked back over to D and JJ and and Candace my wife and and there and so Candace was like so how did how did the conversation go with Red I'm like amazing what okay well he asked about all the kids by name. <laughs> oh, and then D. That is pretty amazing. D looks up. Yeah, dude, that guy remembers everybody. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Red remembers yes, everybody. Sir. Tries to, at least he says. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up. That was a great interview. Thanks for uh, taking the time and you know giving it to the people. Uh, you know, it's on us to. Let them know. And just keep it going for the new year. Will do. And thank you for coming over for the interview. And yes, sir. I can't wait till Ryan Fest. And yeah. And when you drop the love song, uh, I want to hear it. Uh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and tell your uh, beautiful wife hi. Wish she could have been here. But... We're going to hold it out, and this was for beautiful Alaska Natives. This was Mr. Tater Tot, Episode 3, All for the Family. Thank you. Peace. Peace.